Welcome back. It's time for that news that we promised. Today, the city of Salisbury celebrated the completion of phase one of their town square project. Phase one of construction took place right outside the downtown parking garage, and that's where that ribbon cutting was held earlier today. As part of phase one, crews constructed a food truck pad, installed new seating areas, and even added some light poles. This new addition is expected to bring a lot more people to the downtown area. Small businessmen into into the city more, and it gives everybody opportunity to experience what they experience in New York City, Philadelphia, Chicago. It's a great thing because you go to the country and come down into the city and experience two things in one place. You know, we really want to orient this toward kids and families, bringing people back toward the center. You know, cultivating another generation of people that are invested in the heart of their city. Mayor Jake Day tells us construction on phase two of the Town Square project is set to begin in the spring of 2020. On to another story tonight. Officials in Ocean Pines have a plan to improve the drainage situation and they're giving residents a chance to learn about it. Ocean Pines officials have been busy meeting with county and state officials discussing solutions to this constant problem. Officials say they plan to improve drainage in the short term through a maintenance list and replacement of failing pipes at border links and Watertown. Long-term officials plan to replace large pipes in Section 3 in the Pinehurst, Beacon Hill, and Sandy Hook areas. We do recognize the issues of drainage um, in the community, and we were even discussing things with uh, local officials in the county, and, and we're just trying to really see what we can do to improve uh, the Ocean Pines drainage problem. The public is invited to the meeting tomorrow where these plans will be presented. That will be held at the Marlin Room in the Community Center at 9 o'clock in the morning. All right, we're going to jump right into our forecast. We're going to talk about Hurricane Dorian and our Labor Day weekend as well. Right now, a live look outside our Morse roofing and siding sky cam. Not the best picture here. We still have some moisture on the camera lens because of the east and northeast winds that we were dealing with. Uh, just several days ago. Now it looks like another northeast wind will take over tomorrow and cool us down a little bit, especially at the coast. But right now temperatures are right around 70 degrees. Uh, compared to yesterday, we're warmer by about 5 to 15 degrees. We should drop down into the 60s as we head through tonight. Winds right now out of the south, but tomorrow they're slowly going to shift out of the northeast. And again, like I said, that'll keep coastal locations a bit cooler than inland areas. We're also tracking a cold front to our north and that could could uh, spark off an isolated shower tomorrow afternoon, but most of us will stay dry and mostly sunny. Here's the latest on Hurricane Dorian, a category four hurricane here. Just an intense storm here. Look at that eye and there we are and there we go. Florida over there to the west. We're going to zoom in and show you the actual uh, eye here and how strong it is. It is almost a perfect circle here and that's an indicator of a very strong and strengthening storm. So winds right now at 140 miles per hour. This is the latest information at 11 o'clock. Right now, it, they actually shifted the track farther to the east. The latest models are actually having it ride the Florida coast right on the edge of Florida and then heading towards south, the southeast coast. So that's not good news. And then where does it go from there? Does it go up the coast towards us or does it hook out to sea? So we still need to track this, but right now it still looks to be a danger storm as it comes very close to hitting Florida or just barely making landfall there, but things can still change. Mid 60s tonight, clear skies, uh, pretty comfortable when we drop into the 60s as we head into tomorrow. Mid to upper 80s from Salisbury West across the mid shore. But if you live in Georgetown or a town that borders the Delaware Bay or the Atlantic Ocean City, of course, temperatures will be cooler there tomorrow in the upper 70s and low 80s, mostly sunny. Again, maybe a pop up storm through, through the afternoon. You can see that there popping up on Futurecast. We're not expecting much Sunday, a mix of sun and clouds. Again, maybe a pop up shower. We're not expecting much. And then on Monday, that's our best bet. Labor Day itself at seeing some scattered showers and thunderstorms, but still a mostly sunny sky on Monday. We're just going to have to be dealing with a few of those storms popping up. So temperatures again tomorrow will be highly dependent on when the wind shifts out of the northeast. If it takes longer, we could get hotter than 86 tomorrow. But if it shifts exactly when we're expecting it, mid 80s, and then we cool down a little bit Sunday with an east wind. Labor Day again, a few pop up showers. We heat it up. Summertime returns Tuesday and Wednesday. 
upper 80s and low 90s. And then a big change. A cold front arrives Thursday into Friday. And then by then we could be dealing with some of the leftover rain from Dorian, believe it or not, depending on its track. We'll have more on that throughout the next couple of days. Ryan. All right, Daniel, thank you very much. Coming up after the break, we bring back the sports team as we continue our college football roundtable. All that and more when we return. I'm Brendan Riley. I'm the head football coach at Parkside High School, and you're watching Delmarva Sports Insider.